everyone, it's Yelenka here and today we're gonna talk all about PhD. I received a PhD in computer science and here is my dissertation thesis and I know you're interested in me answering so many questions on so many topics so I thought I would make a video about it to sum up my thoughts about this whole PhD experience. So grab a coffee or a good drink and let's get started. I don't have a script for this so these are just gonna be my thoughts so what what comes into my mind. What was I wanting when I went to study PhD? I wanted to be able to do research in a big company. I was like, I don't want to get a once in a lifetime chance and then someone's gonna tell me, oh, you would have been the perfect fit, but you don't have a PhD. You know, the chances of this happening are pretty low, but I thought like, let's just go for it. Primarily, I wanted to do research or be able to do research at any company and, you know, be at those higher positions, let's say. And I knew I didn't want to teach. And the reason why I didn't want to teach or stay at university and, you know, have lectures and teach labs. I just didn't want that. And the reason why is because I'm an extreme introvert and this is never gonna change. Like this, I, I tried so many things, but this is never gonna change. And I just don't feel well in front of many people. And I don't feel well when I'm around people I don't know. So it's not that I would be stressed of talking in front of a lot of people. I just don't feel comfortable because, you know, there's a lot of people and I just feel better when I'm around just a few uh, who I know. And the thing was that at my university you had to teach. So you had to basically teach labs. So you had to have four hours a week of teaching. When I went to study at my university, I knew this. So my thesis topic was fine, everything was fine, but I was teaching a subject which I never even had as a student. So. This was a bit strange to me because not only have I never had the subject, I had to teach it now. So I literally had to like in first place be a student, like go through everything. I had like one week for it. I found out that I'm going to teach the subject like one week before it started. So I had one week to kind of like get started to learn as much as possible from everything I, I had so that I would be able to teach the lab. And you know, that's like kind of the second step because the first step is understanding the subject and then you're able to like write a test. But understanding the subject and be able to teach it is a bit of a different level. So I was extremely stressed. I was extremely mad to be honest, but I somehow went through it. But I'm gonna tell you, I was a mess. Like literally I was stressed. I, I just didn't like it at all. And I didn't like the idea of a young person never having to do anything with this subject, suddenly teaching it and having the responsibility. That's been a huge lesson. So this is one thing that PhD has definitely taught me, but one thing that I probably never wanted to know. During the first year, besides teaching these subjects, I also had to have some subjects myself. So I had algebra, I had statistics and some other subject which were just around the topic of how to write a research paper. So in the first year I was just like you know going through all the subjects and teaching these labs. I did get a scholarship since I was a daily student and all daily students which are at the university do get a scholarship as PhD students so that they don't have to work or so that they get some money. Um, but the thing is that you can't just live out of the scholarship. If you're living with your parents, you definitely can. If you're sharing a room with someone else and you're paying rent and you're dividing it uh, between the, the people living there, then definitely you can live out of the scholarship. But if you're like me and I do have to pay a mortgage, I do have to have a nice life, then definitely that's not sustainable. So in the second year, I had to start to work. I basically took like a gap year from work to just, you know, get accustomed to everything. But during the second year, I did already work. It was just a lot, again, during the second year. So I already knew like what I'm going through with the labs, but then I had to go to conferences and then I had to submit a research article 
to uh, be able to like finish my PhD. And if you know, you know, but when you're writing a research article, uh, it takes months and months and months for the reviewers to review it. They give you their comments back and you have to improve the paper if it needs to be revised so that they can go through it again and then you get their responses again and 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 it goes on. If it gets accepted, perfect, then it takes, I don't know, half a year until it's published, but it's already accepted, so that's great. So for our university, the requirements were to be participating, uh, actively participating, so presenting uh, at least at two international conferences and you had to have one uh, paper accepted in a journal rank of Q1 to Q3. I'm not going to explain the ranking of journals, but I just want you to know that it takes months and months and months, even to years, to have your paper accepted. Depends on how great of a researcher you are. It could be your first paper which gets accepted, who knows? But this usually takes a long time, so I was pretty stressed about that because I knew that I didn't want to study for longer. So the normal Normal period for a PhD are three years. So the first year, the whole first year I spent just working on my dissertation, teaching the labs and uh, completing the subjects I had to complete. During the second year, I went to conferences. I was working on my PhD and I was again teaching the labs and working my job and social media, you know, you know the deal. And I was also part of university projects. Let's say I was pretty burned out. And when the third year was around the corner, I knew that I want to finish as quickly as possible. During the whole summer before the last uh, year of my PhD, I was writing my dissertation. I was trying to get my paper published in a journal and thank god everything worked out. I had my paper accepted, it was due to be published in October of 2023 and I was working on my dissertation so that I could submit it. So during the third year, during the winter semester, I again was teaching the labs, which I had for the third time, so it was already much, much better. And I submitted my dissertation and was waiting for the journal paper to be published. So my supervisor had like a one month period of when he was going through the whole dissertation back and forth. And then I was allowed to, to submit it. So around the end of I think around the beginning of October, I actually submitted my thesis and then I was waiting around three months for the reviewers to give me reviews. But then it was around Christmas. So just a few weeks before Christmas, maybe a week or two, I received um, their comments on my dissertation and I was able to revise my dissertation and submit it again so that I was able to like improve it um, according to their suggestions. So I did that but you know everyone is on holiday uh, during Christmas and the new year so I submitted the final part of dissertation so like the whole dissertation submitted it um, beginning of January. And here is the fun part. So I was told that they have one month to like get back to me with the final reviews. But I was waiting like two months for the reviews. And when I finally got the reviews, I was told that I'm not allowed or I'm not gonna be able to like defend my thesis because uh, we're waiting for another student who would defend it with me and he doesn't have his reviews yet. But the part which made me the most mad was that they still gave me a subject to teach even though I already submitted the thesis, even though we talked about it and I said that I would like to help with other things and not have to teach labs again since I knew that I wanted to like finish my studies and you know it's not only about teaching, it's not only about me not wanting to teach but it's also about the students because if you have a super if you as a student have a supervisor or a teacher like for for a month and then the teacher gets replaced it's kind of strange and especially in the subject I was teaching you we're working like on a big project um, 
and you know I have different views on the project as someone else might have so I require different things from my students and someone else might require I might say that something is okay and the other person might say that it's not okay so it's a bit of a mess for the students and I definitely did not want that to be and I also had like a really major health issues like I used to wake up and I used to like feel extremely bad for the first two hours of the day then I found out that I have some heart issues so I was going like to the doctors and it was again stressful as hell uh, but then the student I was supposed to uh, defend with he actually got his review so I was like okay great so like we're gonna find out like when we're able to defend our thesis and before the defense of your thesis you have to have like a seminar at university where they basically where you present your topic and they can give you some final suggestions um, about your presentation you know about the way you're talking or ask you questions etc so it's like a mini defense so I had that one week before the defense but the thing was the defense was not the same day as from the other student so I was kind of sad about that because I waited for such a long time and then we didn't even have it together because one of my opponents just didn't find time back then so yeah, I went to defend my dissertation, one opponent's review was good, the other opponent's review was bad, but I ended up passing, so that's all that matters to me, right? Um, he had some extreme um, views on some things, and some things he stated weren't true, but I'm not gonna talk about it, you know, it's just, it was just sad to get a review like that, because I never would have imagined a getting such a review like me like I couldn't understand why he gave me such a bad review and it was making me sad and I was again extremely stressed like I was so stressed guys I couldn't eat for the last three days I couldn't sleep like I had to take sleeping pills I had to take like some kind of drops uh, to like not be as nervous because it was getting crazy and even during my defense, uh, which took about one and a half hours, I was getting notifications from my watch that my heart rate is too high. And if you know me, you know that I'm taking pills against high heart rate. So that was something. So now I've talked about all the struggles uh, I had. And these are the things which I was sad about. So I was extremely stressed. I was working alone. This is something I was missing. I was not like in a in a group of people working towards one goal or having similar goals. It was just me and my supervisor. So that was a bit sad. So if you want to study PhD, it's totally fine. Go for it if you know what you're getting yourself into. But it's definitely nicer when you're working like within a group than when you're working alone. Because when you're alone, like you're alone, like there's no one to help you or you don't even ask for help like in my case um, but it's good to have people around you who are like within the same subject and uh, who you can talk to that's really nice to also help you with your research kind of because when you like talk about the research you find new ideas and you just don't feel alone so what are some positive things I was able to get from this it's definitely the ability to somehow manage people because what I did not mention is that I also had to supervise bachelor and uh, master students. So basically they're bachelors and master thesis. So I had to manage people and I was on my own, you know, I had to acquire some soft skills. I had to acquire some time managing skills so that I was able to like finish uh, my PhD in time. You know, it's a lot of being alone kind of because you are with your dissertation and you have to focus on like finishing the dissertation so there's no one who's gonna say like you have to do this until this date like sometimes your supervisor says that but it's never like an end date where they would throw you out of the school or something so it's literally just you having to convince yourself that you have to do something and especially when you're also working it gets really difficult so you really 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 have to push yourself to do something and 
I felt like I didn't have as much time for research as I wanted to have like a lot of times I was like oh no like more and more papers and I just wanted to do my research and not like you know great assignments from students because in the subject I was teaching there I also had to grade assignments every week so I had like 40 assignments each week which I had to grade and I also had to help either help or be in the committee uh, for the bachelor and master thesis defenses so there was also some time I had to spend there and you also have to be the supervision at the final exams after the semester so this is just how it works at the university I was studying at so it's a lot it's a lot and I'm so grateful that it is over like you cannot imagine like I've never felt this happy I think I didn't even need this title but I'm so happy that I have it and I'm so glad that I did choose this path but I'm telling you, it made me around 10 years older. Like, it was crazy. It stressed me out. I was getting major health issues at the end of my studies. And I think a lot of them were due to stress. So, I think this video is pretty long. Maybe we can do a part two. So, if you have any questions regarding PhD, regarding basically anything school university related, then write the questions in the comments below and I'll definitely have a look at the questions. And if there's a lot of them, then I'm gonna do another part. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I was able to somehow help you decide whether PhD is something you wanna go for. And I hope to see you in my next video. So if you think my content is valuable, please like and subscribe. Bye.